Yo, what is good guys, your boys Ikage here with part 2 of what if Deku was Loki. You all loved part 1, so I'm definitely gonna keep this series going for a good while, you know. People have always been asking me to go further into my hero, like to go to overhaul arc. So, definitely gonna do that. Also, no Infinity Stones. You all made that very clear. And in other news, right now I'm going through a hurricane, so perfect timing to come back. <laughs> Hopefully I don't lose power and can upload this video, but with that all out of the way, let's just get right into the what if. So we start this what if off with Loki having a few months left until the entrance exam but these months are pretty uneventful with Loki just waiting around for his abilities to finally return and by the time the entrance exam comes around most of them do return to him except his ability to make force fields and energy blasts. So. It's the day of the entrance exams and Izuku, he gets up and gets ready. He puts on some regular clothes he would work out in, grabs some breakfast and, you know, Inko gives him a massive hug and then he heads out for school. Izuku simply uses his teleportation to appear right in front of the UA gates and surprisingly no one saw him. They weren't paying too much attention. So Izuku just walks up and goes inside the UA building. He doesn't trip. Like why would Loki trip? Why would a god trip? So he goes into the building and immediately he's met by Midnight, one of the hero teachers there, and she is instructing everyone to go and take a seat to start the written portion of the exams. So Loki, he sits down, you know, he's gonna play fair, so he doesn't use any tricks to get around these exams. He just sits down, does it like a regular person, and then after that, they do a quick, like they mark the test like almost instantly. As soon as you submit it, it's marked. So the people who got above 90%, they get to move on. So after finish up the written portion, Izuku does it extremely well. He is like top of the top. He gets 99%. There was a few questions in there that slipped Izuku up, but he wasn't too worried about that. So he walks into this massive lecture hall and he's looking around and sees a lot of familiar faces from his old school. A lot of his classmates decided to take a shot at entering UA. So since everyone was grouped together by the school they attended, Izuku took a seat next to his old classmates and they were all super hyped to see Izuku. They were like he was the reason they applied to UA and it's almost been a year so they have a bit of catching up to do and these were the only people that could make Loki have a lot of fun you know he was really chill around them but something they all realized was Bakugo was nowhere to be seen. Izuku chuckled to himself and said I guess he got the hint that he's weak and they all they all heard this and start having a good laugh about it but Let's actually switch and have a flashback 9 months later to Bakugo leaving school. He's walking down a pretty dark alleyway which is a really good shortcut, it cuts off like 10 minutes of walking to his house. So above him a dark figure says he'll make a great addition to the team. And in front of Bakugo a purple portal opened and this guy with a, a weird head, he didn't seem human but he had on a tuxedo, he walked out and instructed Bakugo to enter the portal. Bakugo he was immediately defensive and he said, or what, I'm not entering any damn portal. And the man who is, we know is Kurigiri, he says, or I'd have to force you in. And Bakugo said, you're not forcing me anywhere. But before he could even attack or anything, from below him a portal opened and he fell into it and into a room. It was like a jail cell from like a police station. But Bakugo, he tried blasting his way through the bars, like using explosions, but they weren't working at all. And soon he heard footsteps coming closer and closer. And Shigaraki, he came out and showed himself and said, oh, so you must be Bakugo Katsuki. And Bakugo is like, what do you want from me? Oh, nothing, but I have a proposal that you can't refuse. 
Shigaraki began to explain his plan to Bakugo that he can become way stronger than he is and defeat those that stand against him. And Bakugo, he wasn't buying it, but you know, Shigaraki, he brought in someone that had multiple quirks from All for One, one of All for One's test subjects. It's sort of a borderline Nomu, but he's still sentient, like he can still think for himself. And this man demonstrates his ability to use air and wind. Just think of like the avatar, basically. And Bakugo, he's looking at this and he's amazed, like this guy... If he starts refining his quirk, like training, he can become a serious powerhouse of a hero. But Bakugo, he obviously doesn't want to become a villain, so he's thinking of a way to get out of this. So Bakugo, he would start getting the trust of Shigaraki saying, okay, he'll think about it, you know, this is something he'd want to participate in. So he would get Shigaraki's trust, you know, Shigaraki would think he wants to become a part of them and he would eventually bring Bakugo to all for one. So while all of this is happening, Izuku is still in uh, the entrance exams and he just entered the gate before the mock city, you know, they're just waiting for the gates to open and Izuku, he's sitting in the back corner just waiting because it's been a while. He's just waiting for everyone to enter before they can start. And Izuku, he sees this girl looking really nervous and he's decided to go and calm down her nerves. So he gets up and starts walking over, but this guy with purple hair blocks Izuku, or well, Loki, and Ida says, where do you think you're going? Izuku just points to Uraka and said she looked worried so I was gonna help her out. And Ida said, like I believe you. And Loki's like, bro, what's your problem? And Ida just says, back off, I know you're trying to ruin her chances of getting into UA. Izuku at this point was really confused, like, what is this guy even talking about? So Izuku just leaves himself there, but it's an illusion while his actual body goes over to Uraka and starts, you know, giving her some words of confidence, saying, you know, she's probably gonna do really good in the exams. And Uraka, she cheers up a, a little bit, you know, this doesn't do much, but it definitely helps her. And soon enough, President Mike gets on the intercom and he says, there are no countdowns in a fight, go, go, go! So Izuku runs off and Ida who was still talking to his um, illusion, he realized that like it wasn't real because it just disappeared out of nowhere and he turns around and sees everyone running out of the gate and Ida he's like damn it. So he boosts um, off with his engines on his legs and he like catches up to everyone. So. Izuku he follows the group for a while and then he turns down a narrow street and at the end of it he sees one of the robots it's a two pointer and he's ready to take it down but something I should mention really quickly for those who need a bit more clarification because uh, how you're used to magic working is maybe they're using runes or spell books or like saying something before they cast a spell like Raven you know she's like Azrat Methri I, I can't remember <laughs> but yeah Izuku, all he has to do is concentrate because Loki's magic, it's that easy. He just has to think about it. He inherited the ability. So with his mastery so far, he has to do barely any concentration for his ability to work. So Izuku, well, Loki, he's going to use his physical augmentation. And what this does is temporarily augments his body, you know, his different attributes like speed, strength, and he's going to make his strength as fast and as strong as Prime All Might. This won't last for very long, maybe 10 minutes at most, but that's enough time for Izuku to rack up a bunch of points. So Izuku does this and his body starts growing to the size of All Might because he can't contain that amount of power within his stature alone. So Izuku, his body starts to grow and buff up and he runs at the uh, two-pointer and with just one step, he dashes and uh, jumps up into the air and punches through the chest of the two-pointer and this causes it to drop down. So All Might and the other teachers who are watching from the observation room are watching, are seeing this and those who know about All Might's quirk are wondering if he already like passed it on, like what is this? He never told them about anyone with his quirk and All Might he's saying he doesn't even know who this kid is but he is incredible. So they keep on watching Izuku and watch as he's going around taking down robots with literally zero effort. 
So Izuku, he racks up 300 points in five minutes. Far greater than um, All Might's record because when All Might did this, yeah, he did have 100% of uh, one for all, but he wasn't, he didn't have any technique to it. He didn't know how to use it without exerting too much uh, effort. So after 10 minutes, Izuku had racked up 532 points and the you know physical augmentation wore off and he was extremely tired because that takes a toll on his body. So he has to rest for a bit and he's just sitting on top of a building watching everyone go around trying to rack up some points and Izuku, he took down most of the robots. So Nezu, he had to release some more robots into the uh, area to make it even fair. So after 15 minutes of Izuku just chilling because no one is going to make it to where he is, let's be honest. So Izuku, he's chilling this entire time and after, uh, yeah, as I said, 15 minutes, um, everyone's starting to exit but he's hearing these loud thuds like a giant stepping. And this of course is the zero pointer. Izuku after that starts hearing screams of students in the uh, area. They're screaming trying to get away from this robot. So Izuku he gets up and starts looking around trying to figure out where the sound is coming from and then he sees it. This massive robot taller than all the buildings around him coming closer to the exit and Izuku he jumps down like he levitates down like he can he can levitate and he goes around and tries helping people people who like don't run as fast as everyone and he just teleports them to the egg uh, and exit and then teleports back and starts helping people and this actually helps him rack up some hero points so it's gonna be way more than just 60 hero points Izuku after doing that he hears this girl screaming and it's the same girl Izuku tried pep talking earlier the girl with sh a short bob hair with uh, and it was brown so he goes over and lifts the massive boulder off of her and Oraka oh, she's breathing heavily because like she was running and then this fell on her so she was disorientated and she could have just easily used her quirk but at that point her mind was racing so fast she didn't even think about it so Izuku, he lifts uh, Uraka up bridal style and she says, Oh my god, th thank you for saving me. And then Loki says, uh, Don't worry about it. So he teleports back to the uh, exit gate and Izuku, he, like everyone was there. Like he didn't have to go out and do anything else. But, you know, he wanted to flex his abilities a little bit. So he teleports back down to the uh, zero pointer where it was. And Izuku, he's standing in the middle of the streets waiting for the zero pointer to come closer and inevitably it does. And when Izuku is almost about to get crushed by the zero pointer, Nezu, he's about to press the button to disable it and that's when Izuku stops it using his um, telekinesis and then he puts both his arms out in front of him and slowly starts pushing them together and with that, the zero pointer starts being crumpled and Izuku, he doesn't have to do this, it's just, you know, cool for him to do it. He could have just thought of it and it just crushes almost instantly but Izuku he wants to put on a show to show that he is you know really strong. So he starts closing his hands and soon it locks his fingers together and this crushes the zero pointer into the size of a tennis ball but this tennis ball was as, as, uh, was as heavy as like 10 cars so like not any and everyone can just pick it up. And the students, Nezu, the other teachers who are watching this, they were like, what is this kid? How is he this strong? So after that, Izuku, he exits and they're just in like disbelief of Izuku's power really. And he walks back to the exit gate and everyone, they start clapping for Izuku. Like that was pretty impressive. So Izuku, he walks out the door to exit the mock city. And then after that, he just teleports home. And when he gets home, Inko, she's excited because she already knows her how great her son is. So she's like, how did it go? How did it go? And Izuku, he's saying, eh, it was all right. He more than likely passed. And this is just Loki trying to be humble because he's seen how people see heroes and he kind of wants to not fit that mold because that's just not Loki. But he wants people to feel more comfortable around him because he wants to sort of take up this heroic act because... Um, I mean, I didn't mention it, but over the nine month training period, he had a lot of time to think 
and he's been getting all his memories back and thinking about his brothers and all the things that he missed out on because he wasn't a quote-unquote hero like Thor and the other members of the Avengers were and that basically led to his death. So Loki wanted to change some stuff up, change up how he is to people, change up his almost entire personality but of course it's not going to be completely perfect. So during the week before Izuku would get his UA acceptance letter, All Might and Nezu go to uh, one of the hospitals to look up Izuku's file and see what his uh, quirk is. And when they look into the file, they see it listed as telekinesis. And they're confused by this because they did that strength that Izuku displayed, that was not just telekinesis, that was something more. That was like one for all levels of strength. So they would have to dig a bit deeper, but Izuku doesn't have much about him. It says he was quirkless for like up until he was seven and his quirk bloomed late. So maybe that had something to do with it, but that's really all they could find. So to get information, they would have to go to Izuku directly. And that's what they did. So a week after Izuku's exams, he got a knock on the door and this was about time for his letter to arrive so Izuku was thinking that this was just like the postman delivering the letter so he goes to answer the door and when he does he's looking straight and he just sees this guy's chest so he looks up and realizes that it's All Might because All Might is tall as hell. He looks up and sees All Might and Loki he's surprised and All Might says young Midoriya I've come to deliver your letter. So All Might, you know, Izuku, he allows All Might to come in and when Inko sees All Might, she almost passes out like, All Might, what are you doing in my house? Do you need some tea? What do you need? And she's asking him like, whatever he wants, he can get it. And All Might, he chuckles and says, that's okay, that's okay. I'm just here to, you know, give Izuku his letter of acceptance to UA. And hearing this, Inko starts getting really excited. He's accepted into UA. She's, she's just going, she's going nuts. Like, she is so excited for Izuku. So, All Might, he sits down at the table and he shows Izuku the letter. It wasn't a disc this time, since everything the disc is gonna say, All Might is gonna say personally. So, Izuku, he gets a letter. And when he reads the letter, it just says, um, you know, thank you for participating in the entrance exams. You have been accepted. You know, the usual uh, college acceptance stuff, yada, yada, yada. So All Might, he begins to talk to Izuku, you know, more a more friendly tone, and he says, so your quirk was pretty amazing in the entrance exams, what exactly was it? And Izuku, he doesn't want to give anything away to All Might, and he just says, it's just a simple telekinesis quirk. And uh, All Might is like, uh-huh, alright, um, well, how would you explain, like, he's not trying to sound confrontational, like he's interrogating him or anything, but he's like, well, how did you do all of that cool thing? You know, you were flying around, punching all the robots. How is that possible with a telekinesis quirk? That's incredible. He's trying to sound as friendly as possible. And is and Loki says, well, uh, that's what my telekinesis allows me to do. It sort of makes me stronger in a way. And All Might, this is making zero sense to All Might. Yeah, All Might is not the smartest, you know, uh, tool in the shed, but this just makes zero sense. But All Might, he doesn't want to pry too much, or he's pretty sure All, um, Izuku would start getting suspicious. So, All Might says, oh, well, that's cool. Uh, I'll see my way out. So, All Might gets up and exits Izuku's house and goes back to UA where he tells Nezu that he really didn't get any information and that Izuku said it was just all his telekinesis quirk, which even to Nezu, that just makes zero sense, bro. Like, what? There has to be something more. So, fast forward a week and it's time for Izuku to start at UA. Izuku, he gets his uniform ready and he goes into school and he he doesn't have a problem finding his classroom because he read the like lots of handbooks so he knows where all the facilities of the schools are. So he makes his way to his classroom and as soon as he opens the door, he sees um, Ida just sitting around like the class is actually pretty peaceful. Ida is sitting, you know, everyone else is sitting. They're having a little conversation with each other. So Izuku, he sits at the very back of the class next to a window. 
And some of you might be wondering, where's Bakugo? Well, he's at the LOV, their hideout, and he had just gotten a quirk from All For One. And Bakugo, he isn't planning on joining them, he's planning to use the power he gets from All For One to fight against the LOV. But I'll keep the quirk he got secret for now. So we're back with Izuku and he's in class sitting down, you know, he's listening on everyone's conversation and Uraraka comes into class and she sees Izuku and she wants to go up to thank him but as she was about to, Aizawa comes up from under the desk and he says, can you all be quiet, I'm trying to get some shut eye. And everyone's looking at Aizawa like, who is this guy, does anyone know? And everyone's looking confused and Aizawa's like, oh, I'm gonna be your homeroom teacher. So he takes out some eye drops and puts some in his eyes then continues his lesson and says, well not a lesson but he's you know talking to everyone and he's saying that they'll need to go outside for a quick quirk apprehension test and Uraka is the first one to you know say don't we have like an assembly to go to? And Aizawa he starts spitting some truth that uh, everyone who goes to those assemblies they gain nothing and when you're a hero your time is the most precious thing because people's lives could be on the line. So you you want to make sure that everything you do is for the sake of those you're protecting and everyone's like oh damn <laughs> that's some truth so they all agree and they get their uh, PE gear from the back of the class you know they get their own personal suitcases and then go to the changing room where Mineta he still tries to peep on the girls but Jiro pokes him in the eye with her headphone jacks and that deals with Mineta so Everyone gets changed and they go outside and immediately Aizawa is like, I want Izuku to come up and show everyone how far he can throw because he got the most points in the uh, entrance exams and when Aizawa says the amount of points he got, everyone thinks he's joking. Aizawa says he got 653 points. And everyone is wondering like, how is that even possible? Like, what, what kind of quirk does he have? So Izuku, he goes up to the um, this little circle area that Aizawa drew out and Aizawa asks what was the furthest he threw in middle school and Izuku says an average number, actually below average, he says like, like 25 meters. So Aizawa hands him the ball and says throw it but this time use your quirk. And Izuku says, okay, so he reels back and, you know, puts some elbow grease into it and he throws the ball and this time it goes soaring through the skies because Izuku augmented his arm strength to be that, like, almost times two of All Might Prime. I know I keep saying All Might's Prime, but it's sort of the best calculation for, you know, this in the My Hero world. So All Might's Prime is what, I think he said seven times what he is in the anime right now, so time that by two again and that's what Izuku has so definitely like this is getting close to planet buster levels it probably already is so Izuku throws this ball out of the atmosphere to Mars like maybe even further Izuku just chucks the ball way further than the um, monitor that Aizawa has to even track it so it goes out of um, you know the planet's atmosphere and Aizawa he's looking at the, mo uh, the monitor and he, he can't comprehend the numbers he's seeing it goes so high to the fact that it fries the chip on the uh, monitor and it breaks so Aizawa he says yeah you, you went out of like out of the atmosphere and everyone is wondering how, how is that even possible he just like threw it it wasn't like a quirk like zero gravity where obviously it will go out of the atmosphere and the person the most amazed was Uraraka she was surprised she thought she was the only one who was going to get a number like that but <laughs> wow she has to give props where props are due. So they go on to do the other events in the uh, uh, quirk apprehension test like side to side lunges, um, 50 meter dash, long distance run, you know all those things like that and at the end of it Izuku is by far the best student at everything combined. He is number one overall and if it was like a gap Izuku he would be way further than second place like second place it's not a close it's not close. So second place comes out to be Momo, third Todoroki, fourth Ida. 
So after finishing up all of these tests, everyone goes back, you know, they change back into their regular school clothes and go through the day like a regular school. They learn English, they learn um, math, you know, the regular subjects you'd get in school. So after that, everyone returns home. But the next day at UA, normally it should be um, the uh, hero versus villains. But this time, All Might isn't at school. He has some important business. So Aizawa, he decides to do the USJ early. So he, um, you know, he does this beforehand. He talks to 13 and she's okay with it. So they decide to do the USJ. So this day of school goes by like any regular day, but at the end of it, Aizawa mentions to the students that they need to get their parents' permission to go and on the USJ. And when people hear USJ, they're thinking Universal Studios of Japan, we're actually going, but Aizawa is quick to correct them that it's actually the unforeseen simulation joint, which is where heroes train to save people in different situations like in floods, in burning buildings, in snowy mountains even. Everything you can think of, it's in the USJ. And this surprisingly made everyone even more excited than Universal Studios of Japan. So when they go home that day, everyone gets permission from their parents. And even when they said no, they begged and begged and begged. And eventually everyone was able to to go to the USJ. So come next day and there's buses outside of the school ready to load the students up and they head in and on the bus ride to the USJ, everyone's having fun, you know, they're talking about each other's quirks, but the biggest mystery among all the, um, everyone is what is Izuku's quirk exactly? Because they don't know what it is because he seems to have some sort of super strength, yet um, people who, was it, who were in the same like mock city as him saw him use telekinesis and saw him float. So they are really confused what Izuku is and he isn't willing to tell anyone which is weird like they're thinking it's weird you can just tell us anything but Izuku isn't like that so the bus pulls up outside of the USJ and Ida is the first one off and says come out you know, like single file lines so everyone they uh, exit the bus and like Ida says they all form a line and enter the USJ First things first, when they enter, they see the Space Hero 13, and 13 starts um, talking about the importance of getting your quirk under control, because if you don't, it could actually kill the person you're trying to save. And while she's uh, explaining all of this, Oraka is gushing over her favorite hero. She's telling Izuku, oh my god, I love 13, I've loved her ever since I was a child. It's sort of the same obsession that young Izuku had with All Might that 13 has with, no, that Uraraka has with 13. So after they're finishing up, um, they start going down the stairs and it's a huge flight of stairs. <laughs> like people are honestly starting to get tired, but as soon as they reach the bottom of the stairs, these different portals start opening up and villains start coming out of them and Kurishima is the first one to ask, weren't we just supposed to do hero training? Why are there actual villains? And as always like, well, th this isn't a part of the plan. And he instructs everyone to go up the staircase and while he and uh, while he deals with the situation and tells 13 to rile, uh, like to get the students together and get them through the door to go back to UA. But when 13 and the students reach the top of the staircase, a huge portal opens up, blocking it off. So Loki knew what he had to do. He's trying to play hero. So first things first, Izuku uses one of his abilities to contact Yue, and it isn't electrical, so it won't be, you know, cut off. He uses his psionic abilities to telepathically send a message to Nezu in Yue. So Nezu, he's like sitting in his office, uh, reading through some papers of the schedules of all the classes, and then he gets the, uh, a vision of Izuku in his head, and Izuku starts explaining their situation at Yue, and after he's done, it disappears, and Nezu, he has to take this seriously. It could have been a joke, it could have been this, but he wants to make sure. So he gets all the heroes together and sends them all over to UA. Especially, not UA, the USJ, especially because he isn't getting any message from um, Aizawa and he can't contact him. So that's really suspicious. So he sends all of the hero teachers over 
And in the meanwhile, Aizawa is taking down these heroes with relative ease actually. Aizawa, you think his quirk wouldn't be suited for fighting, but his scarf makes up for a lot of the slack that his, you know, quirk is missing out on, like his fighting abilities. So Aizawa, he's starting to take down villains while everyone is watching, but Loki, he's starting to get bored and wants to and decides to jump in. So he teleports down to Aizawa and everyone sees him teleport and they are surprised again like what can Izuku not do at this point? So he appears next to Aizawa and he's surprised as well, but he's preoccupied with taking down these villains. So Izuku, he gives him a helping hand and enhances his speed and strength. Not too strong, but enough where he can take down most of these villains with a couple punches. So after around two minutes, they take down everyone around them and Shigaraki, he's starting to itch his neck and getting infuriated. And he says, Kurigiri, bring out the Nomu. These guys are cheating. So a massive portal opens up the size of All Might and out steps this purplish black creature with a bird-like beak and these sharp claws. And Izuku and Aizawa are looking at this thing like, what is it? But because the UA teachers were called early, now they all appear and bust down the door. And this, um, you know, makes Kurigiri's portal disappear. And these teachers, they come in and snipe. He starts shooting at the normal, shooting its legs. And, uh, you know, the normal is getting irritated. So it immediately rushes for Aizawa. But then All Might jumps in and blocks the punch that he was about to like send Aizawa's way. And they start getting into the fight from canon, you know, normal versus All Might, which is personally like my number one fight from uh, my hero. It's my favorite fight. Just you say a run works so well. Oh my god. I, I, let me stop before I start ranting about the song, but it's amazing. So after the normal gets punched through the ceiling and gets sent flying like Team Rocket blasting off again, Loki, he's been a bit busy. He shapeshifted himself into one of the bodies that, you know, he and Aizawa took down. And he shapeshifted into that person and he slowly got up like, you know, he was one of them. So as Shigaraki and Kurigiri were using a tele uh, portal to teleport away, Izuku, he runs to them and says, Boss, I'm alive, I'm alive. And, Shig and Shigaraki turns to Kurigiri and says, Alright, send him back to the HQ. So Kurigiri opens a portal for Izuku and he walks through. Izuku's plan for all of this was to get more information on the LOV, but he was in for way more than he signed up for. Because as soon as he came out of the portal, he saw Bakugo at the bar, you know, drinking. And he's wondering, so this is where Bakugo has been this entire time? He's affiliated himself with the villains? And that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked it, like. And if you like my content in general, subscribe. You know, I had to hit you with the... It's, it's not really a cliffhanger, but it's after a huge information just got dropped. So I hope you guys liked it. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next... What if?